Hey goalers, I'm back here again with Coach Ian and he's going to walk us through his ride kit and all the gear that he brings with him. Perfect, thanks a lot. So, first and foremost, helmet. Has to be a recent helmet, less than five years old. Otherwise, the foam kind of has a memory and it kind of wears out. So make sure that it's less than five years old and make sure that it fits. So that's another thing. So if you have a wobbly head, you should make sure that you have small, medium, and large, so make sure that you pinpoint the right size. And after that, you have a locking system in the back, so you can, you can make sure that it's nice and it fits well. So you don't have any pressure points. So try on a couple of helmets. Sometimes you can get a pressure point right on your forehead, on, on the side of the head. So make sure that the helmet fits. That's why there's different brands, so there's different fits. Even within one brand, you're going to have different fits. And last thing. If you want it to look good and stay on your head, make sure that the straps are well adjusted. So two fingers underneath the chin and make sure that the straps here come just underneath the, the ear. So that's going to help really put it uh, stay, uh, stay in place. Next, we can look at the gloves. So during all my demos, I'm riding gloveless. Do not ride gloveless. When you do have a crash, the first point of impact is the hands. And if you damage your hands, if you have a cut, it's going to take forever to, to heal. So, what I'm making sure of is wearing gloves. I was a bad example and I'm sorry. When I do wear gloves, I make sure first that it fits, that it's tight. And I want to make sure that I have a light grip. So that allows me to feel my handlebars more. You can have more protection or very lightweight. I really go for lightweight. This is very breathable. I hate Velcros, so this one comes without Velcros, but if you do like Velcros, it's adjustable, so that could be good. Last bit, so that's the bare minimum. So I wanna make sure that I have good eyewear. You can have inexpensive eyewear, or you can have this fancy schmancy one. So this, are, this is from Oakley, those are pretty rad. Those are fun. Those protect your eyes. Those will save your eyes. So yes, apart from the sun or whatnot, you are protected. So it could be from rain, it could be from mud flying up to your face, and it could be from tree branches as well. So make sure that they protect. And those ones are pretty cool because they change with the light. So now you see them, they're pretty clear. And if it starts being really, really sunny, they're kind of, you know, you have the, you have the tint in them. So. You can you can try those cool so you've brought along so you have your kit that you bring with you yep right you have your t your tools you have all your first aid stuff exactly. that you carry on you for whatever circumstances you may come across yep. but in terms of riding when you go out there and you want to ride and you want to be confident and you know what kind of terrain you're going to ride yep. like how do you dress okay so first and foremost what i'm going to do is i'm going to wear shorts the shorts give you just a little bit added protection. In the old days, we were all wearing spandex and lycra, so there was two gangs. There was the downhillers that were full padded, and they, you had the lycras. Now, it's kind of blurred between both, so you just dress comfortably. So if you have some really real bike shorts, that's super good. Pockets, they're made for biking, and plus they look good for your après. So if you want to have a beer, you kind of look cool and a breathable t-shirt. So that's the bare minimum. Whenever I'm riding shorts, I have two options. Number one is I can wear a chamois underneath. So it makes sure that everything stays in place, but it makes sure that you don't have any, any rashes from the, from the saddle. Uh, what you'll find is when you're road riding, you have some really, really fancy chamois, chamois, and uh, sometimes really, really expensive. Why? Because you spend like three hours in a saddle, you're always sitting down and doing a continuous movement. We move so much on a mountain bike that you can have something that's really, really high end, but we move around so much back, forth on a saddle, up and down. So it's not always a, you know, a fixed position. So that's, that's really good. Sometimes that's good enough. What I always, always wear is padded shorts. You can't even see them. You know, you barely notice them. They fit close to the body. In case of a crash, it really protects you. So first and foremost, they're gonna protect the hips. So that's gonna be often your first point of impact. So you're gonna have the arm and you can have the hips as well. 
that f you know rocks whatever you know you can really hurt yourself so this is good and this is the first layer of protection like that's the bare minimum that i'm going to ride so those are called the lights so it's the lightest available version uh you barely notice them so it's it's really good you have the you have the tailbone protector as well and you have a chamois so this chamois is just a little bit more high-end than the one i just showed you so this is a really good quality as well cool so as we've done shorts and, and you wear these obviously how do you like you wear them and you put another pair of shorts on top uh yeah exactly so that's the first layer so i'm okay. either going to have no pads or pads but you always want to have a chamois for obvious reasons okay any uh any differences between men and women for uh well chamois? you're you're going to have a lot of women specific stuff yeah exactly but honestly it hurts as much for men and for women but you will have some uh, some adapted for women oftentimes they're you know they're they're anatomical so it fits the width uh, of the of the hips so we have very different sizes for men and women so they are adapted same thing with the saddle choose a lot of saddles try it try a lot of, of different saddles and you're going to see the one that fits so women size women specific stuff is starting to be huge because we have a great base of women riders now so it's fun it's not like men's size that it's that's kind of smaller it's really catered to uh, to the geometry, the body type of women. Okay. So that's really good. Cool. I saw you bought some other pads here. What are these? Exactly. What I always, always recommend is knee pads. Every time that I ride, I have knee pads. This is why I have two pairs here. So I have one that's, again, very light. So it's this, exactly the same, the same brand, the same family pad. So they're very light, very comfortable. So if I'm going for an all-day pedal, I'm going to wear those they're not going to bother me they're not going to be too hot and when i'm pedaling they're not going to you know hinder the movements so that's something i really really recommend then i can have something that's a little bit more heavy duty let's say i'm going faster down more technical terrain uh, if i'm riding the uplifts or if i'm doing like pretty gnarly stuff i can have another layer of protection so this is more heavy duty so this is a rigid, it's not a rigid, uh, you know, surface. However, it's more padded, it's thicker, and it can, you know, uh, suffer a lot more abuse than those. If I go even one step above, it's going to be hard plastic shells. But okay. those for an all-day pedal, they're really not comfortable. Cool. So in terms of uh, riding, when you go out for a ride, uh, how do you dress? Is there like a bare minimum that you bring or you bring all of this? Well, I always have a saying and that's a funny one. I'm always asking myself, how do I want to crash? So if I'm doing very, very technical terrain, I'm going really fast and I'm taking chances, I'm going to put a little bit more. If I'm going for an all day pedal, I can choose to wear a little bit less, but it's all a question of risk management. So if you put less gear and you do crash, well, you have to suffer the consequences. If I'm dressing really overkill and I'm going on an all-day pedal with buddies, well, you know, they're going to laugh at me because I'm going to be huffing and puffing and super warm. So you want to wear the right attire based on how long you're pedaling, how much vert you're climbing, and how, how technical are the, the features. You can even f have something that's super heavy duty. And if you have an all-day pedal and you're pedaling up like an hour, an hour and a half, you just stop five minutes, take a snack on top, and you put your heavy duty gear and you go down. So sometimes you're pulling up, <clears throat> but you have really, really technical terrain. So that's where you bring stuff with you, stuff that protects a little bit more. So that's a good tip. That's cool. And, and let's say you wanna do some really, really gnarly stuff. Like, how do you dress for that? Well, <clears throat> again, it goes with speed and it goes with te technical terrain. So this here family of gear, is more cross-country enduro all-day pedals but when you really want to take chances and do stupid stuff on a bike which sometimes i do i want to wear an extra protection and that's the dh kit okay dh high-end enduro so <clears throat> it's going to be offering a level of protection that's going to be greater and this is a hard shell okay so hard shell and you have here again that's the same family 
the same family of Paragon, but this one is the plus. So this is a light shell. It still protects really, really well for the spine, but it is something that's a lot more flexible. This one here is a plastic hard shell. It is articulated, so it can move around. However, really solid. So if you want to hit the, hard, the, the ground hard, that's what you want to have on you. Same thing with the pads. So if you compare both, this one is going to be more heavy duty. It's going to be heavier. It's going to be a lot warmer on pedal up, but they're going to have added protection. So <clears throat> the, all the, 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 what do you call it here? The hip bone. The hip bone, the hip bone and the upper hip bone, which there's a fancy word, but I forget. So this one is going to be protected as well. So you have more layer of protection. What I really, really recommend, and mostly like both of my kids, they're riding, they're riding super hard and they're doing big jumps and stuff. I always ask them to wear a hard shell. Uh, you can call it as well a roost deflector. So that's, that comes from uh, motocross mostly, but I'm always asking them for a hard shell. The front part here, it's pretty simple. It's one of the major crashes you're gonna see in biking is when you, you receive the handlebars directly in the stomach. So all the organs here, super important. If you grab your handlebar in your stomach or in one of your organs, you can have internal bleeding and that's a no-no. So if you receive a handlebar to the gut, you go to the hospital, you don't, don't take any chances because you might feel all right, but you have internal bleeding Give it a couple of hours and it's going to be going downhill really, really fast. So front and the spine, well, I don't have to do too much explanation. The spine is pretty important in the body. It serves a pretty big purpose. So you want to have your spine well protected. Cool. One last thing. <clears throat> this is a fanny pack. I talked about it. I have all of my gear going in into the fanny pack. Why I like the fanny pack is because it sits on my hips. So I don't have the added weight on top of my shoulders that can throw me off balance. So I don't like a hydration pack personally, but a lot of people are wearing them. Again, you know, pick and choose and try different stuff. For me, it's a hip pad. However, when you do wear a hydration pack and let's say the bladder is full with water and you do crash on your spine, well, the bladder is gonna explode, but you're gonna save your spine. So that could be something good. If you are very, very careful with that, pay attention to actually what sticks out. So how do I place my equipment here is gonna have a big impact on what actually hits my spine. So for instance, let's say I'm putting this multi-tool multi directly here. Guess what's gonna hit my spine if I do crash? This is going to go directly in my spine. So watch out for that. For this, I'm always taking my SAM splint and I'm always putting it at the end, you know, in the impact zone of my pack. And if you have a backpack, sometimes it's filled, you go to backpacks of friends and it's filled with garbage. So make sure that when you do crash, no tools is going to go jamming right into you. So that's, that's something else to look at. That's smart thinking. Yeah. All right, thanks, Ian. So, goalers, there you have it. That is the complete list of what you need to bring mountain biking based on varying conditions and risk factors. Mm -hmm. Feel free to look in the comments below, and you have a fully detailed list of what we all talked about today. Now, until then, well, let's go play in the outdoors. And safe riding. <laughs>